are going to have one play to try and save ourselves, and some stupid miracle could still happen. We will not quit. And there's a Today, the long-anticipated rematch, with these two teams colliding at a crossroad in their seasons. The Bulldogs chasing their first conference title in two decades. The lone undefeated team remaining in the SEC, though some have questioned their legitimacy. A victory today solidifies Georgia as frontrunners in the SEC East. So far this season, the Tennessee football team has seen it rain on their parade. A series of inconsistent performances has left the volunteer nation in shock. But in a show of incredible resiliency, playing with a renewed sense of purpose and pride, the volunteers won a six overtime thriller last week to remain very much alive for conference honors. Heavenly intervention aside, today, Judgment Day in the SEC. on CBS. Another significant Saturday in the South. That means more than 86,000 will gather at Sanford Stadium. And visual evidence to the contrary, very little chance this will be a dog of a game. It's the SEC featuring the Tennessee Volunteers coming in with a ninth ranking and a four and one record against these men, the undefeated Bulldogs of Georgia. Right behind them, the Volunteers of Tennessee. Important game in the East Division of the SEC. Georgia undefeated both in conference play and for the season. Tennessee 1-1. One one. They lost their first game in the conference to the University of Florida. Good afternoon, everybody. Vern Lundquist along with Todd Blackledge. We welcome you to Athens, Georgia. The overriding question of this week for Tennessee, the health of quarterback Casey Clawson. Bruised shoulder in the fourth quarter of the win against Arkansas. He has not practiced yet this week. Will he or will he not play? Let's go down for the answer to Jill Arrington, who's with Philip Fulmer. Coach Fulmer, the question all week has been your quarterback situation. You told us it would be a game-time decision, and here we are. What's the status of Casey Jill, Clawson? Uh, Casey's just too sore. He wants to play, uh, but ethically, I can't put him out there and put him at risk. Uh, there's a chance during the course of the ball game, a play or two that he, that he needs to do. We might have a chance to do it. He did throw it well, but C.J. Leakes our starter. James Banks is ready. We'll play Kelly Washington a little bit as we get an opportunity to and go with that. All right, Coach, thanks a lot. There you go, Vern. Okay, Jill and Todd, how does this affect things for Tennessee? Well, it really simplifies things for Tennessee. One of the great advantages that Casey Clawson had was his grasp of this offense and his ability to check off to things at the line of scrimmage. Now, he warmed up before the game, but I think this was more decoy than anything else. They want to get him back for Alabama in a couple weeks. So that means that the starter today is C.J. Leak. Now, C.J. Leak is a transfer from Wake Forest, and he was actually the starting quarterback there for three games as a sophomore in 2000. He had a serious knee injury and had his season cut short, transferred to Tennessee, sat out last year, and he has the best grasp of this offense. More athletic than Clawson, but pretty much a drop-back passer. But we'll also see true freshman James Banks out of Indianapolis and Kelly Washington, the receiver, both of those guys talented with the ball in their hands. Whoever plays quarterback, the burden is on the Tennessee offensive line, no question. True Tennessee football is to run the football, and 136 yards today won't get it. This group was coming into the season to be the strength of this team. They've got to set the tempo and establish the Tennessee run. Well, on the other side of the field, the Georgia Bulldogs are enjoying rarefied air, something they haven't done in 20 years. 5-0 and oh at this point in the year, and they have featured a couple of men on either side of the ball. Yeah, on offense, it's Musa Smith. The tailback is really starting to get into a group right now he's a guy who battled through injuries last year this year 
He's really playing well. Last week, 21 carries, 126 yards, and it's his running that sets up their big plays off the play action passing down the field. On defense, it's sophomore David Pollock, the defensive end. He is a playmaker. He has a great nose for the football, and he plays with a high energy level. It's his energy that the rest of this defense feeds off of. If Ugga the sixth is ready, that means the Georgia fans are ready. This game is all of our Saturday telecasts brought to you in high definition television. Well, these teams first met in the 1890s. They're only 208 miles apart. But this is only the 32nd meeting between the two, and only the second time both have been ranked in the top 10. Temperature 81 degrees, humidity of 62%, partly cloudy, the forecast, and only a slight breeze. Georgia won the toss and deferred, so Tennessee will open this uh, football game on offense. And Corey Larkins, who is having a terrific season as a kick returner, averaging 30.4 yards, is one of two men deep. But Kerouac kicks it deep. And it will be taken out of the end zone by Larkins. He's got room, and he's got a lot of room coming to the left, and then knocked out of bounds at the 30-yard line. So it will be C.J. Leak. He has appeared in one game this year, but he essentially hasn't played since October of the year 2000. Right, and I mentioned they will simplify things. Randy Sanders, the pressure on him as the play caller now to guess right and call plays from the sideline. Don't ask the quarterback to see a lot and change a lot at the line of scrimmage. And it starts to take pressure off him if they can get their running game going. Jabari Davis is the tailback, and they open in the eye. Here comes a run blitz. Davis hit behind the line by Sean Jones, number six, and picks up a couple. And let's check the Alamo starting lineups now. Tennessee's offensive line, it's Munoz, Young, Wells, Smith, and Ofenhusel. Jabari Davis and Troy Fleming in the backfield. Kelly Washington, Leonard Scott, the wideouts. And the tight end is Jason Witten, one of the heroes of that six-overtime win against Arkansas. Leak, the toss to Davis, has trouble controlling. Does manage to get near the 35-yard line. There's Tony Gilbert in the middle. And we'll check this Georgia defense. It's going to be uh, working on a third down now. Will Thompson, Jonathan Sullivan, Darius Swain, and David Pollock. The linebackers, Boss Bailey, Tony Gilbert, and Chris Clemens. And in the secondary, DeCorey Bryant, Sean Jones, Kentrell Curry, and Bruce Thornton. Third and four. From the 35. Tennessee has not run the ball much on third down this year. I wouldn't be surprised to see him try to run it on this first third down. Load up the right side. Here's Leak. Tries to throw. There was Pollock in his face. And that allows the pressure to come from the other side. And it's made by Thompson. Will Thompson gets his fourth sack of the year. And credit Bruce Thornton for disrupting Kelly Washington because that's where C.J. Leak wanted to go with the football. They wanted to get it to their best receiver, and Bruce Thornton in position, and Lee couldn't find him, just couldn't see him, and that allowed Thompson to make the play. And Dustin Colquitt is on to punt on fourth down. Tennessee leads the country in net punting. They've been very effective, but the ever-dangerous Damian Gary is back awaiting this punt from Colquitt nice and high. And Gary drifts over, grabs it near the sideline at the 27. Hurdle at the 43, out of bounds at the 44. He has two punt returns for touchdowns in his career, one this season. And the other one was last year in this game against Tennessee, 72 yards. David Green, redshirt sophomore from Snellville, Georgia, for the season, 58% when rounded off, over 1,000 yards, nine touchdowns, five interceptions, and 13 and four as a starter. I like the way that Philip Fulmer described him. He called him an operator. And I think it's a great word because he is. I mean, he, he manages the game very well for a young quarterback. Bulldogs will open with four wide receivers and in the spread. That's Gary in motion, number 18. Green, the lefty, wants a screen pass. 
And it's thrown behind Musa Smith. Incomplete. Let's check the offense now for the Georgia Bulldogs. 27-25 winners last week. Stinchcomb, Jackson Knight, Breedlove, and Kareem Marshall up front. And Musa Smith off his best game of the uh, season. JT Wall in the backfield. Edwards and Gibson, the wideouts, and the tight end is Ben Watson. And from the I formation now, Musa Smith, the deep back. And Gary starts in motion. Here's the toss to Smith with JT Wall leading the way. Gets a block on Eddie Moore. And then uh, the tackle is made out of the corner by Willie Miles, number three. This Tennessee defense, they have been surprisingly susceptible against the run this year. Amari Hand, Rashad Moore, Braille Franklin gets a start, and Demetrian Beal. It's Moore, Peace, and Whiteside. They've had real injuries in the linebacker core. Miles, Baker, Wilson, Jabril Wilson, and Julian Battle starts at right cornerback in place of Jabari Greer today. 37 from the 47. Blitz from the corner. It's Eddie Moore. Green has time. Incomplete. Intended for Reggie Brown, number one. And the Bulldogs will be forced to punt. Both defenses with good three and outs on their first possessions. And Georgia not able to take advantage of the good field position after that exchange. That's going to bring on Jonathan Kilgo in his previous three years. Average better than 40 yards per punt. But... Uh, near the 39 yard of this year Corey Larkins is the deep man Rashad Baker normally back to return the punts here's Kilgo and Larkins drifts over lets it go at the 10 it'll come out to the 20 yard line following the touchback 53 yard punt for Kilgo it comes out to the 20 neither team able to garner a first down on their first possession They play football between the hedges here at Sanford Stadium. And, 10, and the Tennessee Volunteers have a first and 10 at their own 22nd offensive set in the opening part of the game. C.J. Leak played three games two years ago in a starter at Wake Forest. Injured knee, transferred, sat out all of last year, has played in one game this year on for Casey Clossy. Draw play. Jabari Davis goes right. 23-yard line. Casey Clawson. Unable to go, Todd. Yeah, he's unable to go, and he, he's a tough kid, and you can see that was the last time uh, that he did not start a game when they lost that ball game, and uh, he, he wanted to play, as Phillip said. And you see he's off to a, to a good start in this season, but they, they need to think about the whole season. You know, they got a lot of football left, and uh, he was a decoy because when he came out in full pads, he didn't even have his ankles taped, and, so, uh, and it fooled the Georgia coaches for a while. Jonathan Wade is on the field. Split wide to the left. Here's a draw play. They keep it on the ground. Jabari Davis to the 26-yard line. Picks up two more. This Georgia defense now, they did an excellent job against a good running football team last week against Alabama. They held Alabama to under 120 yards rushing. That's Brian Van Gorder, the defensive coordinator, and he knew what kind of challenge, same kind of challenge this week. And he said, we've got to defend what Tennessee is. It doesn't matter who's playing quarterback. In order for them to be successful, they have to try to run the football, and then if they can get that safety up, then they can go play action and throw the football. Leak yet to throw. It's third and five, officially from the 25. Blitz threatened. Blitz coming. Here's Leak on the rollout. Looks for a block. Bruce threatened. Tens off the block. And with help from Tony Gilbert, they stop C.J. Leak. A yard and a half short of the first down. It was a good idea to go sprint out with him because the blitz came inside by the Georgia safety. But you see the speed of the Georgia defense. You see Leak gets out to the perimeter, and right now he's thinking he can make the first down, but Tony Gilbert able to run him down from inside. And that brings on Dustin Colquitt for the second time. Damian Gary back to return it. Dodd mentioned that in this game a year ago, Georgia trails 17 to 3 in one of the pivotal moments in the game. A 71 yard punt return by Gary to get Georgia back in. They, of course, won it 26 24. They have won the last two games between these two teams. Great punt. Sure is. Cold quit. High, oh. deep, and uncatchable. 
Penalty marker, though, at about the 40-yard line of Georgia. Something going on down the field. There's Mark Richt, 42 years of age, in his second season. Having come here from Florida State University, where he served as the offensive coordinator. And uh, Steve Shaw, our referee today, so we'll get the decision here in just a moment. During the kick, illegal block at the back on the receiving team. Penalize half the distance to the goal from the end of the kick. It'll be first and ten. And Mark Rick talking about uh, his first two years around in the SEC, and he said there is a passion here that is unmatched any in any other conference in the country. That is amazing. Unbelievable. That, that is, was the one area this year where Florida State thought they were very solid in their kicking game. Wow. Wide right, wide right, wide right. Wide left. David Green, first and ten. No score in this one. 921 to go. Out of the gun on first down. Ian Knight is getting set to snap it back, and Green changing the play. Four-man rush for Tennessee. Deep left side over the shoulder of Reggie Brown. And incomplete. One of the things I think Tennessee is going to try to do defensively is to rotate people in as much as they can early. And this defense played 87 plays a week ago against Arkansas. Here's Green, little slam pattern inside to Fred Gibson. But he manages yardage only to the 10-yard uh, line. Gibson's first catch of the day, one of the stars in that win last week, had a remarkable 42-yard catch. He's had problems, though, holding on to the ball. Yeah, he's not the most physical guy. I mean, he's a basketball player. He didn't start playing football until he got into high school. He's an extremely gifted guy, but needs to spend a little more time in the weight room and be more physical as a receiver. Matter of fact, the only member of the squad that he outlifted was Billy Bennett, the field goal kicker. He's going to hate that I brought that up. Yeah, he will. Here's Green going deep. He's got Terrence Edwards first down out at the 33 yard line. Starts with time. I mean, you can't make this kind of a deep throw down the field if you don't get protection. And watch the five guys up front. Only a four man rush by Tennessee. So it's five on four, plus they kept the fullback in. Excellent protection. And that allowed David Green to look deep to short. And he found Terrence Edwards on the sideline. Edwards with the catch. He's nearing in. A mark is the all-time yardage leader in receptions for the University of Georgia. Out of the backfield, left side, Michael Johnson. And that's another Georgia first down to the 50-yard line. A gain of 17. Now this is so well executed. Watch now. They're going to motion Usa out, and then he's going to block. And they're going to throw it here, but it's the blocking by the other two guys. They get Terrence Edwards and Musa Smith out there leading the play. That's a well-executed bubble screen to Michael Smith. And again, Georgia with the no huddle. Green has it. Hand off Musa Smith. Trouble on the left side. He tried to go over. John Stinchcomb, number 78. And Musa Smith, one of the reasons Georgia is 5-0 has been the durability of Musa Smith. He's been handicapped by injuries most of his career. Yeah, he has, and he's been healthy. They've done a good job of maintaining him. You know, he didn't really start full-speed drills until summer. Full-speed running, they've kind of eased him into it. When they played lesser opponents this year, they didn't make him play very much or carry the football. And so they've really been able to count on him in these big games so far this season. Second and ten. Again, a change by David Green. See, the no huddle by Georgia makes Tennessee keep the same people on the field defensively. They know they're tired. That's coming. Sleeping grab, Terrence Edwards to the 35-yard line. He needed 36 yards to become the all-time leader in yards for the University of Georgia. He just did it. He has surpassed Bryce Hunter. Terrence Edwards. Well, Willie Miles was in coverage, and Willie Miles never saw the football, and it was an intentional underthrow. You throw that to the back shoulder and let your guy find the ball, stop, and go up. And meanwhile, the corner, he's just running for his life to try to catch up. First and ten. Moose Smith. And 
again Tennessee waiting for that play Musa Smith to the 37 yard line well Edwards making amends for a, a very disappointing season last year he's got the UGA career touchdown record of 24 most 100 yard receiving games second in the number of receptions to Bryce Hunter the only game in which he has been blank during his career was last year's loss to Florida. Second and 11. Smith. Nice spin move. Down to the 31 yard line. It'll be third. That's the bread and butter play of, of Georgia. I mean, the sprint draw, that is their play. They give the ball deep to ice. Uh, to Musa in the eye formation. He follows the block of his fullback, J.T. Wall, and that's the same action that sets up their big passing plays down the field. Three wide receivers on third and five. Blitz, Green, Edwards, intercepted. Picked off by Rashad Baker on the deflected pass. That interception belongs to David Green. It was too high. He had Terrence Edwards on the slant, and when you throw to the middle of the field, you don't want to make a receiver go high to catch the football. If anything, throw this thing down and away and let him go to the ground to catch it. Don't make him jump in the middle of the field. The ball's tipped, and Rashad Baker comes up with the interception. A big turnaround for the volunteer defense. Tennessee has the ball when we come back. Philip Fulmer told Jill Arrington we would see James Banks at quarterback. Now we do. He is in on the third series. Very athletic kid, a true freshman. You see no attempts and throws better in game situations. There's the handoff up the middle. It goes to Jabari Davis. James Banks, highly recruited out of Indianapolis, Indiana. In trouble at wide receiver, the second receiver other than Kelly Washington a week ago. And James Banks was running some wide receiver with the first team. And I should qualify his better throwing in game situation. Of course, he hasn't thrown in a game, but in practices, he's much better in scrimmage situations than he has been in just one-on-one -on -one throwing. Second down and five. They keep it on the ground. Jabari Davis goes over right tackle. And picks up three. All right, thanks, Tim. Casey Clawson looks on with his teammates. There is C.J. Leak, number 12, also watching. Third and three. Montrell Jones is on the field for the first time. And the backs are in the eye. Draw play. Davis, I don't think he got it. No. And the safeties for Georgia, I mean, they are anticipating run every time. And so they are getting those safeties up in a hurry. And take a look at these safeties. That's Sean Jones right there. He's a safety. He's not a linebacker, but he's up in there anticipating run. And it's just one more guy than Tennessee can block. They're outnumbering them at the line of scrimmage. It's going to force Tennessee to try to throw the football if they can't block everybody. Dustin Colquitt off to a good start in this ballgame. On the season, averaging 43 and a half yards. Blocked! Reggie Brown blocked it. It heads toward the end zone and is recovered. A safety. He did not maintain possession in the field of play. Uh, safety, Reggie Brown with the block. Reggie Brown with the block and Ben Watson with the recovery. And it was, uh, that thing was spinning right by the corner of the pylon, trying to stay in, but just no way to, to keep it in. Take a look at the block. Right up inside, Reggie Brown was unblocked. They looped him to the inside, and he was unblocked. And watch this ball just try to hang in bounds and just not able to corral it. But what a block by Reggie Brown. Unimpeded, as they say in some circles. He came straight at Colquitt. That's the first time Dustin Colquitt has been blocked this year. Reggie Brown, they looped him, and nobody was there to pick him up. Excellent design by the Georgia special teams to get a man free coming up inside. Watch Reggie Brown come out and then loop inside, and nobody blocks him. He starts on the line, he takes a step back, and then he loops in, and nobody is there to pick him up. 
Mm. Mm -hmm. And Philip Fulmer, knowing he was playing undermanned in this game and without his quarterback, said we've got to be good on special teams. We, we can't give up things in special teams. And there's a big break for the Georgia Bulldogs early. 2-0, Georgia. Free kick to be taken now by Tennessee. Fred Gibson, Terrence Edwards. Wait the kick from the 20. Well, that is the fourth special teams touchdown this year. Score. Touchdown. Philip Newman kicks it off. Gibson at the 14 yard line. He had a 91 yard kickoff return to open the season against Clemson. And he gives Georgia a first and 10 at the 30 yard line. First score of the game just occurred before this sellout crowd of 86,000 plus as Dustin Colquitt had his first career punt blocked. And it was blocked by Reggie Brown. Out of the end zone for a safety. And a first down and 10 now for Georgia with a 2 0 lead. One of the changes that Tennessee made this week, moving Julian Battle out to corner. He's a bigger guy going against Fred Gibson. Looks like Green might have tripped as the exchange was made. Follow top 25 games with complete play-by-play -play information. Just click on NCAA football at cbssportsline.com or on America Online. Enter keyword CBS Sportsline. Loss of five last play, second down and 15. Excellent penetration by the Tennessee defense on that last run play. Play fake. Green comes left. Nice move by Reggie. Uh, Terrence Edwards. Boy, he, uh, he whipped Julian Battle yeah. on that one. And what that is a case of is a guy who's used to been playing inside as a safety, and now he's out at corner, and he got kind of lost in space right there. Dr. Smith, you know, he's out there. And he's not real sure how to get to the football. And David Green slips it right in between Battle and Rashad Baker for the completion. Terrence Edwards having a big day. And he is now the all-time leader in Georgia history in yards in a career. Reggie Brown back on the field. Motion. And Rashad Moore pulled off sides. And again, that's, that's a mental mistake because he is right next to the football. And he should just watch the ball, but he's not looking at the ball. He's listening to the quarterback. And, you know, there's very few guys on the defense that can actually hear the quarterback, but he's one that can because he's right there close. All sides on the defense. Five yards to the previous spot. Still first down. Now, perennially, Tennessee has been very strong on the ground, but you see they're yielding more yards per game this season. Well, a couple factors. Number one, they lost their whole front four from last year. I mean, their front defensive four was excellent. They lost the whole group and then they lost their two best linebackers in Kevin Burnett before the season and Kevin Simon uh, just recently. So they're they're under man. There's the gift to the fullback J.T. Wall. And on the first and five he gets one. Wall uh, seldom carries. It's only his eighth of the season. He is a true fullback too because I, I met him in practice on Thursday and had like a cut over his nose and just you know <laughs> typical fullback loves sticking his nose in there. He's a very good lead blocker for Musa Smith. Now from the spread second down and four ball at the 50. Linebacker comes on the blitz left side is caught by Michael Johnson that will be good enough for a first down. Now the Tennessee 44 yard line. Good recognition by David Green. What he's going to see is he's going to see this corner blitz. And as soon as he sees that, he knows he's got a quick throw to Michael Johnson. There's the blitz. He sees it. He gets rid of the ball quickly before Wilson can get to him. Michael Johnson, another big receiver who's working his way into the rotation. Three wides for Georgia on first down and 10. Here's Green. Hit just as he lets it go. Looks like a Braille Franklin got there. 
And uh, let's check in now with a DuPont virtual playbook. On well, the Georgia sprint draws, their bread and butter. Now it's a play that's a little unique because they block it strong side and they start the action like they're going strong, but they want to bend it back. So the key block is the fullback, JT Wall. Watch the action start strong and it goes back weak. Now at this point, Musa, he just finds daylight. Wherever he sees a crease, he runs the football, but that is their bread and butter play and it sets up their play action. Here's Tony Milton. And that was it. Yeah, that <laughs> was it. Stopped. Nice timing. <laughs> yeah, good timing and good defense by Tennessee. You drew it better than they ran it. Yeah, they didn't execute it as well that time. And part of that is the Tennessee defense. Watch the penetration up front. These guys getting the push on the inside. And it just makes it tough to run that play. Robert Peace on the blitz. And he gets there and kind of blows it up along with Abreu Franklin. John Chavis, defensive coordinator, came out of the booth at halftime. At home in a monsoon. In the game that they lost to Florida, said it's the first time in seven years that he spent games down on the sideline. He likes it now. He can look his players in the eye. Third down and 14. Pressure coming. They got green. Eddie Moore came on a blitz. It's not a sellout blitz, but they get enough of an overload to where Eddie Moore comes in free. Tennessee likes to move people around and here's Eddie Moore right here and he's just going to come on the blitz and nobody picks him up. It's not a full out blitz but it's enough to occupy the Georgia lineman. Good defensive stand by Tennessee and right now it's kind of like a, a boxing match. You know it's field position and kicking game and defense. Jonathan Kilgo and Corey Larkins will let it go and it does go through the end zone a 53 yard punt for Jonathan Kilgo. All right, thank you, Tim. I don't know if there's more pressure on any single football player in college football than on Chris Sims. I mean, and, and, and in this game, in that game against Oklahoma, good to see him getting off to a good start. Tennessee trailing by two, first down and ten. James Banks still in the quarterback. He'll throw. Nice fake. Lobs it out. Overthrows his intended receiver, Kelly Washington. Tennessee is getting nothing done running, so they finally come out and throw. Now watch, it's a bootleg. They're going to fake the run. He makes a good fake. He's in position. Now he's got his man, Kelly Washington, just too much air under the football. I mean, Kelly's a big receiver, but he's not that big. Kelly Washington, and uh, we expect to see him at quarterback before this game, game is done. Well, they got to figure some way to get the ball in his hands. If they can't throw it to him, then they might as well put him at quarterback because they can't win if he's not a factor. The two big playmakers for Tennessee are Jason Witten and Kelly Washington and neither one of them's had their hand on the ball yet. That's Witten who's in motion. Troy Fleming the fullback faints to his left. Keeps going forward and uh, picks up a few out to the 23 yard line perhaps the 24. Really impressed with the Georgia run defense. I mean I, I said the same thing last week against Alabama. They're not an overpowering defense. They're not an overly big. They do have some depth. They're able to rotate some guys in there but they're very fast. Casey right now you know he's saying golly if I was in there we could be mixing it up we could be throwing it a little bit better but they're only down two. That's the end of the first quarter with a score two nothing Georgia will return to Sanford Stadium right after this message and a word from your local station. Back for the start of quarter number two Tennessee trailing Georgia two nothing going on Chris Todd Blackledge Jill Arrington. James Bank and a quarterback he has thrown once CJ Leak with the start in place of the injured Casey Clawson and Tennessee still looking for its first first down its third here in quarterback draw Banks flag is down this one might come back yeah this was a tackle on Scott Wells the center I mean it was right in the middle of the action and it was a tackle on Jonathan Sullivan and that one's going to come back so Wells guilty of the hold as Sullivan got close. 2-0, University of Georgia, Casey Clawson, in case you didn't uh, join us at the top of the hour, out with an injured shoulder and will not play today. It really has affected them. Yeah, it's really limited their play calling. 12 plays for Tennessee, only one pass, and they haven't done anything running the football, really. 17 yards running the football. So uh, a difficult situation. Casey Clawson trying to do all that he can to help out the other quarterback, C.J. Leakes, and now the, the true freshman, James Banks. But... This is the situation that you want to avoid with a young quarterback. Third down and 16. Now Georgia hasn't been adept at running the ball, but they do have the only score in the game. Third and 16. 
James Banks just needs to be smart with the football right here. I would expect another run. Your defense is playing good. Run the football. Draw play again. Derek Tinsley. And Tinsley picks up the first down. My goodness. Not only run it, but get the first down running. How unlikely. And you know Georgia's thinking run, but Michael Munoz and Jason Respert on the left side. You see Sullivan runs himself out of the play, and then great blocking by Munoz and Respert on the left side. And that's the kind of running play that Tennessee needs to get going. Derek Tinsley, a homecoming of sorts. He played his high school ball at Marietta, Georgia. He's been used more as a receiver in the slot this year than as a running back. That is only his 14th carry of the season. First down and 10. Here's a play action, and Banks rolling right. He is belted by Tony Gilbert, but hangs on to the ball and is down at the 46-yard line. Now that's the thing you worry about with a young quarterback who's a great athlete. When he gets out there in space, you know he can make plays, but does he know to protect the football? He gets out there, he doesn't see a receiver, so he tucks the football away, gets a good block from Jason Witten on Boss Bailey, and then here comes Tony Gilbert. But Banks did a very nice job of protecting the football. And how big was that third down play? I mean, Tennessee, you know, they were going to have bad field position again. Now they're out to the 45, and they call timeout. And they do have to use a timeout, stopping the clock, looking at a first down and 10. Volunteers picking up 32 yards in the last two plays. The big run by Derek Tinsley on third down. And Gerald Riggs, true freshman, who's carried only five times this year, is in a tailback. A very familiar name, of course, his dad. Great star in the NFL. First down, reverse. Kelly Washington going to his left, and he is all by himself. Looks for downfield help. Spin move. He picked up 12 yards in the first down. So you got to find a way to get his hands on the football. I mean, he's too good of a player and too big of a difference maker that you got to find a way to get him the ball. Now, here he is down here. They're going to fake inside and get him the ball in reverse. You haven't been able to throw it to him effectively. Give it to him on a reverse. Chavis Smith with a nice peel back block. And Tennessee with another good play on first down. Now, Kelly faked the throw. I think that was just a fake to kind of make the defense stay back on the receivers. And then he protects it at the end. Washington will sit out of play. He did pick up the first down. You mentioned when Riggs was in the game. This is more of a game that's set up for him because he is a very talented runner, but the problem from him has been picking up the pass protections and all the checks at the line of scrimmage that Casey Clawson liked to use. Now there's none of that with a freshman quarterback, so you put your best runner in the game and hope he can make a play. 5'11", 217 pounder, and he will get the handoff, heading left, gets a block from Whitten. And Riggs spilled after a gain of three yards. And let's check in down on the sideline with Jill Arrington. Well, Vern, this certainly isn't the way Coach Fulmer wanted to come into this Georgia game. One of the biggest games circled on Tennessee's calendar, having lost to them the past two years. Eight key starters are either out or very questionable for this game. Four of their best defensive players are out. The leader of their team, Casey Clawson, is out. It shows you just what a great recruiting job they've done because the backup guys have done a pretty good good, good job up to now. But, Todd, how different would this Tennessee team be healthy? Yeah, real different. And Philip told me right before the game, he said, I've never had a team like this uh, to go through this many injuries. This is Jabari Davis to the 40-yard line. That will bring up another third down. Philip Fulmer, 11th season here. He owned Georgia for a nine-year period. Lost the last two. Jill brought up a good point about his recruiting. I think he's one of the best recruiters in all of college football, and they've got good, young, talented players, and they coach them up and get them ready to play. And they've been able so far to kind of plug the gaps with the exception of a five-minute period in the second quarter against Florida. They've been able to get it done for the most part. And he goes with James Banks at the quarterback here. Double tight end set. Third down and five. Throwback, screen pass, a little high, but caught, but no gain. Kelly Washington down at the 45-yard line. You see, the high pass is why Georgia was able to stop the play. When Kelly had to leave his feet, that allowed the Georgia defense, which is very fast, to run to the football. If he's able to catch it with both feet on the ground, maybe he can make a guy miss and get the first down. 
So Dustin Colquitt on the punt for the first time in this quarter. Had one blocked. The good news about this possession for Tennessee is they should be able to flip the field position because they're kicking from inside the 50. Colquitt very high, goes for the corner and finds it. Had an excellent punt. Other than the block, he's having a terrific day. So you don't get any points. You're still trailing 2 nothing, But because you made some plays and you converted that long third down, now you put Georgia in the hole and you let your defense play football. Time call. We'll be right back. Funny show. Funny guy. Funny guy. Yeah. Funny show. <laughs> Not funny field position for the Georgia Bulldogs, though, for the second time in four possessions inside their 10-yard line now. Moses Smith has been held in check. Five carries, three yards thus far. He's the high back. Green will throw. Pump once. Boy, he had a lot of time, and there's a mix-up on the route with Edwards. Now, it wasn't a, what happened was they tried to go hitch and go and fool Willie Miles, and Willie Miles didn't bite on it. And so then David Green really didn't have anywhere to go with the football. It was a one-man route. And they thought that they would fool Willie Miles. Watch Willie Miles see the quarterback. So he knows it's a pump fake. So he stays deep. And Terrence Edwards has nowhere to go. And uh, David Green, lucky he didn't throw a pick there. But that was just good coverage and good awareness by Willie Miles. Willie Miles from Fort Worth, Texas. Missed last year with an injury. Here's the handoff to Smith. Spilled at the 10-yard line. Well, I like to see that, not just because they got the lead, but the last several years, Michigan has just been so much more physical than Penn State. Good to see him run one in for a touchdown. You look from the end zone on third and five. Now, high formation. Play fake. Green goes deep right side. Incomplete. Good coverage. Julian battle on Terrence Edwards, and there is no flag. Well, again, Julian Battle is a big guy. He's 6'3", 205 pounds. So he's a much bigger, more physical guy than Terrence Edwards. And there is a grab. They may have been able to call holding, but not pass interference. As long as you're on the same level as him, you can continue to bump. And the ball plus was uncatchable, thrown out of the sidelines. Brian Jordan will snap it back now to Jonathan Kilgo on fourth down. And uh, Corey Larkins back to return the punt. He waits at the 42. That bounces at the 49. And comes to a rest at the 41-yard line. 49-yard punt. Nothing on the return. Nine minutes, 53 seconds remaining in the first half. Georgia by a deuce. Warm day in Athens, Georgia. Georgia leading by a 2-0 score, a blocked punt leading to a safety. Casey Clawson unable to go because of a bruised left shoulder. And James Banks is the second quarterback on. He plays in place of the starter, C.J. Lee. Best field position for Tennessee thus far in the game to start a drive. Gerald Riggs running back. 45-yard line. We chatted with Philip Fulmer earlier this week about the condition of uh, Casey Clawson. He said then he didn't think he'd be able to play, and God asked him, did he remember anything in his experience comparable to this? And he said, yes, his senior year at Tennessee, they started out with David Chadwick as the starting quarterback. Injuries, ineffectiveness. By the time they got to the fifth game, they were on their fourth quarterback. And Jim Maxwell, in 71, completed a run of seven wins in a row and Tennessee won 10 games that year. Second down. Here's Banks. Stiff on. Good defensive play by Boss Bailey, number 45. Yeah, and I'm sure what James Banks is thinking is, man, they didn't have linebackers like this in Indianapolis. I mean, a guy gets me out there in space, I'm supposed to juke him out. But Boss Bailey may be the most athletic linebacker in the conference, if not the country. And he just... Just kind of sized him up and ran him out of bounds. Third and four, last four possessions, four punts for Tennessee. You know, the good thing for Tennessee, though, is their third down situations, with the exception of one, have been manageable. They've had four third down situations in between three and five yards. So that's, that's good for a young quarterback. Third and four here. And Banks will take off. Little juke to the right. 
to the 46 yard line he picks up the first down after a gain of nine yards the reason I make that point about third and three to five is because the run is still a factor now watch as these guys rush okay they get up the field and Banks sees a little crease. Now he knows he only needs four yards, so he doesn't have to run a long way, and he gets the first down before Clemens able to wrap him up. And that's the good thing. When you get manageable third down situations, the run is still a factor. First down and 10 from the 45. And the clock stopped now. Timeout taken by Georgia. And the time comes with eight minutes and 42 seconds to go in the first half. All right, only a sense of real restraint prevents me from saying holy Toledo. <laughs> That's one of those plays that works one time a year. And it will <laughs> never work again, but they pulled it out at the right time. First down and 10, Banks still the quarterback, hands it off to Jabari Davis. They try the middle, and they get a lot of yardage to the 35-yard line. This is going exactly the way Philip Fulmer would have wanted. They're down two to nothing, but they're able to get their offensive line in the ball game. They're taking control up front. This is Tennessee football, power running with a power running back, Jabari Davis. And not only, they're eating up time and they're resting their defense. Now, Michael Munoz at the uh, left tackle spot, among the injuries sustained by this bunch, he broke his right hand in practice on Tuesday. Just uh, wrapped it up and said he'll play. His tough, dad tough uh, for the wanted, the, wanted <laughs> his dad, one of the real great players yes, in sir. the history of this sport, Anthony Munoz, makes every game. You know, Todd and I had a chance to see him at the Hall of Fame induction ceremonies back in Canton in August. At home, he likes to sit in the end zone so he can watch the blocking from a lineman perspective. I don't know if he got tickets in the end zone here or not. I think they made him sit on the side. He's uh, he's about on the 10-yard line. Okay. Not the best, but not the worst. Not as good as ours. First down and 10. Banks looks deep. Good coverage downfield. DeCorey Bryant had him covered. Now Banks trying to improvise. He's in real trouble. But he made something. He got back near the line of scrimmage. And now one of those highly anticipated moments in each of our broadcasts on Saturday afternoon. But this one is very special. It is time for the Affleck. bonus question. No, it's not the bonus question. I thought it was. <laughs> we, <laughs> we're having vocal and mechanical problems. I certainly hope that doesn't give us the glitch of the week. Gerald Riggs back on the field. Second down and 11. Loss of one in the last play. Riggs going left. Good block from Jason Witten. Outstanding block. I mean, he is a big, physical, athletic guy. And that time, they kind of put him in a fullback position. I mean, he's a tight end, but he's a very good athlete. Now watch as they take Witten and they put him in motion. And then he's going to lead the play. They're going to pull the guard, and the guard kicks out. And Jason Witten is the lead blocker, and he gets the block on Chris Clemens. And a nice running play for Tennessee. But again, this is exact. This is Tennessee football. Take the pressure off the young quarterback by establishing your running game. It didn't happen early, but because their defense has played so well, they've been able to stick with it. And now they're getting into a groove a little bit. Derek Tinsley in the backfield had a big third down run series or two ago. That's written in motion. Here comes the backside blitz. They hand it off. Little toss underneath, and that is not enough for the first down. At the 26, so decision time for Philip Fulmer and Randy Sanders here. I don't think it's any decision. Kick the football. You know, get a. You, you not only do you get three if you can make this, but you take the lead, three to two. Alex Walls, among those injured, pulled a quad in warmups in the Florida game. So Philip Newman is on to punt, or rather, on to try the field goal. Newman, a 6'1 junior transfer from Marietta, Georgia. For the season, four of seven has had one block. His longest thus far, 35 yards. This is for the lead. He's got a very strong leg. He was booming him in pregame. Seth Reagan will hold it. Snap is not great. It's blocked. Boss it's picked Bailey. up. Boss Bailey blocked it. And this is DeCorey Bryant, number 22. You got a couple factors working here. 
you got a bad snap, which affects the timing of the field goal. And then you got a guy with a 48-inch vertical leap going straight up in the air to block the football. We talked about the athleticism of Boss Bailey, but take a look at this now. Here's Bailey right in the back, and he's gonna get a running start, and the snap is a little bit bad that affects the timing, and then Bailey gets right up in the air to get the block. Wow. Special teams for Georgia strikes again. First down and 10 after the Boss Bailey block. They blocked the punt and a field goal. David Green in the shotgun. Lob across the middle, caught at the 49. Well, Todd alluded to Boss Bailey's vertical leap. He held a record of 42 inches until spring drills, and Reggie Brown came in and jumped 43. He was in the morning session. They told Bailey when he got there for the afternoon vertical leap. Now think about this. Put a, put a mark on your kitchen wall <laughs> that's three feet, 10 inches above the floor. Then stand flat-footed and jump above it. That's how high he jumped. Musa Smith with the carry. Boss Bailey's block has uh, given Georgia possession. Now here's the, this is not the bonus question. Trivia question. Today, the 73rd anniversary of the first game played in this stadium. Whom did Georgia play? And what was the score? Third down. All I know is I think it's a big third down for Georgia to make. They've got to take advantage of that block. Got him. Willie Miles Smith, Terrence Edwards makes him pay. First down, Georgia at the 23 yard line. Big conversion for Georgia. I mean, your defense is playing well, Tennessee's defense is playing well, and you get a break from the special teams. You've got to convert. Willie Miles got twisted around, and Terrence Edwards. Again, Georgia, the best receiving four in the Southeastern Conference with Edwards, Damian Gary, and Fred Gibson. So it's very hard to, uh, to choose who you want to try to take out of the game. All three of them can hurt you catching the football. And now Edwards gets a rest, and Michael Johnson is on the field. A 2-0 game, 5-34 to go before the break. There's Green, drills it. Caught by Gibson, the flag is uh, thrown on the near side. Now the flag came with some contact between Michael Johnson and Willie Miles, and it could go either way. And Green looks at the side, and the uh, huddle taking place at the 15-yard line. I watched Michael Johnson in practice on Thursday. He's a big physical kid, 6'3", 215 pounds, out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. He's not listed on the depth chart anywhere. Holding on the defense, 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. It will be an automatic first down. Here's a replay away from the action. They threw the ball the other side, and here's Willie Miles getting a hold of the big receiver, Michael Johnson. It's a mismatch size-wise for Georgia, but away from the action, and Georgia's still with first down inside the 15-yard line now. Ball spotted at the 13. Georgia leads by two. High formation. Gibson on the bench for this play. Ball play, Musa Smith. Boy, tough yards running. Nothing easy. <laughs> Tennessee's defense, it's amazing, really, when you consider that they played a four-hour game last Saturday night. They played 87 plays, and a lot of the starters on this defense didn't come out at all during the overtime. So some of these guys played more plays than they've ever played in a Tennessee uniform. And right now, they're playing with great resiliency, but where that may show up is in the fourth quarter when that fatigue might hit them. Second and nine at the 12, double tight end set. High formation again, Green play fake, chase to his right, pressure comes, intended for Robert Brannon, who was not looking back. It's an incomplete pass. This, this was an ugly looking play, and Mark Rick, I'm not sure he knows what David Green was doing. Why are you throwing it to him? He's blocking. Third down. Uh, David Green had... Uh, a terrific first season as a redshirt freshman a year ago. Grew up near here. 
began this season in a battle with DJ Shockley in the first two games. He gave way to Shockley. Then in the uh, South Carolina win, game two, Shockley injured a foot, broken foot. He might be back next week. Three wide receiver set on third and nine. Play fake again. Nope. Handoff up the middle. Now this will position them for Billy Bennett's field goal attempt. David Green and no bigger game did he play than the win in the come from behind in Knoxville 26 24. But just had a superb season. He really did and uh, enjoyed visiting with him on Friday. Really uh, nice kid and I think starting to get more and more comfortable again this season. You know sometimes they call it the sophomore slump. You know it's just hard to measure up when you had such a good first year as a starter. Tennessee calls timeout. Philip Fulmer was not pleased with the personnel he saw. During the timeout, Mark Richt and David Green having a more or less casual chat on the bench. Billy Bennett is on to attempt the field goal from 27 yards, two game winners this year against Clemson, and again last week in the win at Alabama. Jonathan Gilgo holds it, and Billy Bennett, who was one of 11 young men who grew up in the classic city of Athens, Georgia, to play for the Bulldogs this year, knocks it home and gives Georgia a 5-0 lead. Georgia, a blocked punt that led to a safety to give them a 2-0 lead, then a blocked field goal that ultimately led to a little distress on the part of Smokey. It's 5-0 here. A nice uh, second and third down stand by the Tennessee defense to keep Georgia out of the end zone. They're still only down uh, less than a touchdown. And again, for Philip Fulmer, this is exactly what he needed for his team, for a new quarterback, a freshman, James Banks. Keep it close. Let your running game still be a factor. Corey Larkins, again, averaging better than 30 yards per return. He has not returned one for a touchdown this year, but has a long of 70. And here's Brett Kerouac. This one taken at the four by Larkins. Comes to his right and goes back to the left. Tackle made at the 23-yard line. Now let's take a look at the SEC moment presented by Sonic, the debut of a guy named Herschel Walker at Georgia. After Tennessee jumped to a 15-0 lead, Walker, two touchdowns. You think... Bill Bates will ever forget that play or wish that he's never reminded of it. Walker ran over Bill Bates. Georgia went on to win the game 16 to 15, a jump start to their national championship season. 16 to 15 in that one. First and 10. Banks finds his receiver who then proceeds to drop the ball. That was Leonard Scott. Well, that's been Leonard Scott M.O. his whole career. Great speed, great track guy, inconsistent catching the football. And, uh, you know, he's got to make that catch. You've got a, a young quarterback, you're trying to play it close to the vest, you call a pass on first down, and you do everything right except catch the football. Uh, a track man who is playing football. Second down and ten. Don't forget the Gateway Halftime Report with Tim Brando and Spencer Tillman. Scores and highlights on this very significant day in college football. Here's Banks rolling to his right. Tucks it. He'll run to the 32-yard line. That's short of the first down. It'll bring up third down. Third and short, though. I mean, that, again, that's the good news for James Banks. As long as you keep it under five yards, which they've been able to do in this first half so far, then you keep the run as a factor on third down. And Georgia can't be too cute and too uh, aggressive in coming after the quarterback. Andy Sanders, former quarterback at Tennessee, offensive coordinator, stands in front of Casey Clawson. Bruised shoulder. They have an open week next week, and the hope is that Casey Clawson will be ready for the Alabama visit to Knoxville on the 26th. Jonathan Wade is in at wide receiver. Play action. They lob it out to a wide open running back, Troy Fleming. And the fullback gets loose. 
One reason he occupies that spot, he's great coming out of the backfield. He's an excellent receiver on everybody in Sanford Stadium thinking run on third down and short. And a nice call by Randy Sanders. Watch all these guys react to run. Everybody's thinking run. Let's stop the running play. They bring the safety up. A nice play fake by Banks, and nobody picks up the fullback, Fleming. And Tennessee with good field position and a new set of downs. That wasn't the easiest catch no. either for Troy Fleming. That's a gain of 25. Washington and Wade are in uh, the lineup now. First down and 10 at the 43. 5 nothing with 2.24 to go before the break. Again, the rollout. Banks down to the 36 yard line. Well, time to answer our Aflac. question of the day. The 73rd anniversary of the first game played here. Whom did Georgia play? Well, the Bulldogs and the Bulldogs. It was Yale. And Georgia prevailed by a count of 15 to nothing. And that was just prior to the. Uh... <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Hug is getting a little ugly. I bet the ducks get wet. <laughs> I've been known to slobber a little bit. <laughs> Here's Banks. Chased by Boss Bailey. Got some running skills, doesn't he? And all of that for a two-yard gain to the 35. A two-yard gain, but it uh, takes a little steam out of the Georgia defense because they're running around chasing them. This is what James Bank gives to you. I mean, his ability to create. He was an excellent high school football player in Indianapolis, was 42-2 and two as a starter, led his high school team to two state championships. There's a little hold by Jason Witt. Look at Tony Gilbert pleading his case. Man, this guy will not let go of me. I mean, this isn't dancing out here. This is football. Third and three, a 5 nothing game. Tennessee has to use their last timeout. Again, you don't have Casey Clawson who can handle the managing the offense at the line of scrimmage. Tennessee's got to call a timeout. Nineteen twenty-nine first game played in Sanford Stadium. We mentioned over thirty thousand on hand. Let's get more from Jill Arrington. Well, Vern, you guessed it. Seventy-three years ago today, the first game ever at Sanford Stadium with the Bulldogs coached by Terry Mayer hosting Yale. The legendary Vernon Catfish Smith played both ways and scored all 15 points to lead Georgia to victory. Something else there, Vern. I'm tempted to say I remember it well, but even that, uh, <laughs> no, nah, not quite. See the refs, they didn't have stripes. You know, they had all white. <laughs> Third down and three. Another time to take a look at Troy Fleming now. He's in the backfield and an excellent receiver coming out of the backfield. Four-man Georgia rush. Banks tries to buy time, lobs it deep, incomplete, threw it away, incomplete. I think they were trying to go to Troy Fleming, and he got just manhandled coming out of the line of scrimmage. Troy Fleming lined up in the backfield. Here he is over here. Now watch as he tries to escape. They just kind of grab him and knock him and push him, and he can't get out. And uh, James Banks tries to run with it. And a nice play by Kenny Veal. Well, Philip Fulmer will uh, pass on the opportunity of attempting a 52-yard field goal for Newman. He had one block. So the Volunteers training by five go for the first down with no timeouts left, 46 seconds to go before the break. Washington down at the bottom of the screen against DeCorey Bryant. And Banks... John Jones stayed home. Number six. And that's just inexperience by James Banks. I mean, there's a quarterback draw, but you got to let that develop a little bit longer. You know, you got you to gotta show pass a little bit more. Retreat a little bit more and show pass. He's just in a little bit too big of a hurry, and that, you know, that ball fake isn't going to fake anybody, that windmill thing. But it's something he'll learn. I mean, he's a great athlete. He's made some nice plays in this ball game, but he didn't fool Sean Jones, and he wasn't quite patient enough. Uh, exasperation. Part of the body language of Philip Former. 5 nothing. Special teams. Block punt. 
for a safety. Blocked field goal, or that led to a field goal. And now Georgia uses a timeout. They've got one remaining, and we have 38 seconds to go before the break. Georgia has used its final timeout. They've got the ball with a second down at the 47-yard line, leading 5 nothing. I don't think they wanted to use their timeout there. I mean, you want to try to save that last timeout as long as you can because now what happens is if you throw the football down the field and it stays in play, it'll stop until they reset the chains, but you're going to have to run everybody up there and spike the football with 19 seconds left. Damian Gary and Reggie Brown come wide to the left. Terrence Edwards, who's caught six, is wide right. Here's Green inside. Now they cannot stop the clock. The clock will stop while the chains are reset. And David Green says, let's spike it. Yeah, you get everybody up. Now you got to make sure they're set. And then you spike the football. And then a good job of managing this by David Green. Clock starts. Ball down. Ten seconds to go. Now right now, I think you're in Billy Bennett's range. And so Mark Rick does too. And he's going to bring them on right now. No timeouts. You don't want to take a chance of something going awry. Points have been very, very hard to come by in the first half of this football game, so you kick it right now. Billy Bennett had a 43-yarder to win the game against Clemson, the season opener. This one from 44. He's 7 of 8 for the year, and he carves this one just inside the left upright. Weird score, isn't it? <laughs> Eight nothing at the break. A safety and two field goals. And we check in with Jill Arrington, who's with Philip Fulmer. You're down eight nothing, but are you pleased with the tempo and the effort that your team's shown in this well, first half? Yeah, it, it, it's ugly offensively, but we're doing what we need to do, making a fir enough first downs to not get ourselves in trouble. Obviously, we'll play this like it's nothing and nothing and try to get a, a score or two, and if our defense can just keep battling, they're battling their rears off, and we got a chance here. We got to take it to the fourth quarter. Coach, we've seen the emergence of freshman James Banks. Will you stick with him in the second half? Probably, yeah. James has done a nice job. We've got a couple things with Kelly Washington. We could come back with C.J. Lee. So right now, James is a little bit hard for them to, to catch up with, and he gives us a guy out there that can make a play. All right, Coach. Well, thank you. All right, Jill, thank you. The elusiveness of James Banks, but the Volunteers trail by eight at the break, and it gives us a chance to go back to New York and say hello again to Tim Brando. All right, Vern, thank you. Coming up on the Gateway Halftime Report, Spencer and I will have all of today's scores and highlights, including a fantastic finish in Florida after this word from your local station. Back for the start of the third quarter, Georgia leading Tennessee 8 nothing. As the Bulldogs try and win for the third time in succession against Tennessee, something last accomplished in the late 80s. Here's Philip Newman to kick off for the Volunteers. And Fred Gibson chases it over his shoulder. We'll let it go through the end zone and come out to the 20-yard line. First half highlights, special teams. Here was Reggie Brown blocking a punt. That led to a safety. Boss Bailey blocking a field goal. That led to a field goal from Billy Bennett. That made it 5 nothing. and then just before halftime, Bennett connected on yet another. So the halftime numbers, modest they are. Block kicks. And uh, what else catches your well, attention? three yards rushing by Georgia. Not very good. Musa Smith, one of the real factors for Georgia, not able to get anything done in that first half. But a very important defensive series for Tennessee. The way they're playing and trying to win this game, they can't afford to give up a touchdown to Georgia early here in the third quarter. Here's Green, drills it. That's deflected behind the line. And uh, knocked down, so it'll be second down and 10 as 
Keon Whiteside gets it. Well, what do you think of, of Philip Fulmer's approach to how he has to play this game? Well, I think so far so good. I mean, he wants to run. He wants his offensive line, his defensive line to, to control the football game. But I think he's got to find a way to get his playmakers involved in the second half. That would be Kelly Washington, who had one catch for minus four yards, and Jason Witten, who had nothing. And James Banks scrambling is not going to beat this Georgia defense. And the same could be said for Georgia. Fred Gibson shut out in the first half. I mean, he's a factor, and uh, he's got to be involved. Green slips it to Musa Smith. Musa Smith to the 26-yard line. You know, the volunteer troubles today. Two kicks blocked, four negative yardage plays, only 22 passing yards, and the quarterback sacked twice. And again, the theme of this ball game: Casey Clawson on the sideline. Bruised shoulder. Two newspapers in Tennessee have reported that he has a hairline fracture of his clavicle. Tennessee not confirming that. Third down and four. And here's Green. Pumps once. And Edwards has it knocked loose. And a flag flies on Willie Miles. Well, this is the guy they've gone after. They've kind of stayed away from the bigger corner, Julian Battle, and they've gone after Willie Miles, and most of the time it's been with Terrence Edwards. And there you see the bumping and grabbing, and I think it's the grabbing of the jersey that got Willie Miles in trouble there. That'll be 10 and result in the first down. And Georgia having real problems on the ground. I go back to what we talked about, Tennessee not playing the run all that well mm -hmm. this year. They certainly have today. Yeah, well, and Georgia, this has not been what they thought it would be this year. Coming into today's ball game, they were 11th out of 12 teams in the SEC running the football. Now, they had their best game last week against Alabama, 161 yards, but very difficult today running against this Tennessee defense. First and 10 after the penalty, Michael Johnson back in the field. Here's Green looking to his right all the way. Goes deep to Gibson. Diving try. Incomplete. Good idea, though. I mean, you've got to get him in the ballgame. And I really think this game will be determined by which one of these two teams gets their playmakers the football. Fred Gibson shut out in the first half. The only time he touched it was on kickoff return. And he's too good of a football player to, uh, to not get his hands on the ball. You can't throw it to him down the field, give it to him on a screen, give it to him on a reverse. Second down and 10. Tennessee has three men down. They bring four. And Lucy Smith has belted for a loss back to the 30-yard line. What a play by Julian Battle. I mean, uh, he just came off the edge as a safety or a corner and ran right by John Stinchcomb. Stinchcomb certainly not ready for a defensive back to come flying by the screen at that time. And he made a nice play. And again, behind the line of scrimmage, so it brings up third down and long. Now, second down, Tennessee has defended very well. They forced a lot of tough situations on third down for Georgia. Here comes the blitz on third down, and uh, this one's going to be a dead ball penalty before the snap. Georgia has had nine third down plays in this ball game so far, and five of them have been... Ball start on the offense, five-yard penalty, third down. Five of the nine have been for six yards or more. So whenever you do that as a defense and you force long yardage situations, it plays into your hands as a defense. And Mark Rick knows it as well as anybody as a play caller. Much easier to call when you're inside of six yards and when you're on the other side. Now third and 20 from the 26. Again, Tennessee with three down. And they will bring four. Green across the middle, tip, battle, no flag. Yeah, and good play. two officials on either side. Good play by battle. I mean, he did have his left hand on the back of the receiver a little bit, Damian Gary, but it was still a good play by Julian Battle. He reads the in route, he's got his eyes on the quarterback, and he gets the right hand on the football. Nice play by Julian Battle. John Stinchcomb working on Demetrian Veal. Veal was moved from tackle to end this week and partly due to the injury to Carlton Neal, but he played some end last week in the Arkansas game and played exceptionally well. He was one of the defensive stars in the six overtimes in the win over Arkansas. Now Jonathan Kilgo on to punt, and Corey Larkins again deep to return it. Oh, he 
boomed it. Larkins all the way back at the 20. Dodges the first defender. Goes left looking for a wall. Hurdle. He's got some room. He's got two men to beat. Larkins tackled at the 38-yard line. This, sometimes you say a guy out kicks his coverage. I don't think that was the case here. It's just the first guy missed, and then Larkins was able to bend it all the way back to the other side of the field. Ryan Davis was the first guy that missed the play. And if Larkin's able to keep his balance, maybe he takes that for the touchdown. But still an outstanding effort by Corey Larkins in Tennessee now and James Banks with excellent field position to start the third quarter on their first possession. As you saw, a 42-yard punt return of a 53-yard punt. And a first down inside the 40. Banks will go from the shotgun. And Jason Witten is out here now. A nice idea. Move him out. They lob this one out. Kelly Washington looks for blocking help. And he slips and falls. He got the block he wanted from Banks. <laughs> Banks yes. Gave him the block. And it looks like he got tripped up on the uh, the the G in the middle of the field. But again, get the ball to your playmakers. Kelly Washington, Jason Witten, Banks with the block, and I think he just got tripped up by James Banks. He got the block from Banks, but he also got tripped by him. Negative yardage for Kelly Washington now on two catches. Two for minus 13. Second and 19 after the loss. Movement. Yep, left tackle. And Munoz moves. Again, a new quarterback. A little different sound on the snap count. Even though James Banks has been in this virtually this whole game, it still is a difference. Dead ball. False start on the offense. Five-yard penalty. And while they mark off, the penalty will go back and check in with Tim in New York. Vern, we told you at halftime, Antoine Savage had returned a kickoff 81 yards. Well, this is what happened afterwards. Nate Hibble to Trent Smith from three yards out. They get the two-point conversion. It's now 14 to 11 in the Red River rivalry in Dallas. All right, Tim, I have seen a few of those battles. They are played with a certain amount of fervor. Second down. Here's Banks rolling to his right. And he'll tuck it and run. He's got a room now. Munoz is down. And what a block. Oh, Michael Munoz laid one on Tim Jennings. And what a job by Michael Munoz hustling downfield. You'd think it's away from him. Maybe he could take the play off. Not Michael Munoz. He feels his quarterback coming all the way back across the field. And there he is leading the way. And just, I mean, that's such a mismatch. 300 and some pounds against 164 true freshmen. His dad, Anthony Munoz, looking on third and one. William Revel is in with Derek Tinsley in the backfield. So it's Rebel, the fullback, the blocking back, and Tinsley, that's very close. I don't know either. Oh, look at You see Anthony so mad. You can't have penetration on a short yardage play. And he's not mad at his son. The penetration came inside. You just can't run short yardage plays and give up penetration. And you see nowhere to go. They didn't gain an inch on that third down play. He looks like he's been talking to Philip Fulmer. <laughs> fourth and one. Tinsley and Fleming. Last fourth down try. They faked the run and threw it to Fleming. Play fake. Pressure. Banks. Got him. Sheldrick win. Number 91. They tried to fake it on fourth down again and go play action. And Shedrick Wynn, watch him just chase this play down. He doesn't get fooled. He's got his eyes on the quarterback the whole way. And then he shows the quickness and the sure tackle. They tried to fool the Georgia defense. Shedrick Wynn would have none of it. Third sack of the season for Shedrick Wynn.
10 06 to go in the third. Georgia leading 8 0. Shelbrick wins sack of James Banks. A loss of 15 on fourth and one. Now that's the key. I mean, not only do you not make it, but you lose 15 yards, and now Georgia gets the ball at midfield. So everything goes against you on that failed conversion. On first down and 10 from the 45, here is the toss. JT Wall leading Luke Lucy Smith to the left side, and he is out of bounds. And uh, we told you we had a bit of a bonus. Here is the Affleck. trivia update. Remember last week we said name any of the seven Division I players to return both a punt and a kickoff for a touchdown in the same game? Well, that was generated because of Derek Abney's accomplishment. We had some responses. Khalil Hill of Iowa, Eric Blunt of UNC, Charlie Choo Choo Justice all the way back in 1946, Joe Rowe of Virginia. We're missing a couple yet. Second down and six. Play action. Green with time. Settles for the short man. That's JT Wall, the fullback, and he's down as a flag flies. We may have Robert Peace with a uh, face mask penalty. It is very warm down on the field. You see the end of the play, and it's uh, Keon Whiteside that's got the right hand on the face mask, and it was a good decision by David Green to dump it off. Five-yard penalty on the defense. And now you get the first down. First down. Jill Arrington reports to us from the sideline that Terrence Edwards has been taken into the locker room. Muscle cramps. Would expect him to be back. And that was a problem for Musa last week in uh, Tuscaloosa. Battled it in the third quarter, had to go in for a while. Michael Johnson back on the field now. First down and 10 at the 40, and it's an 8-0 Georgia lead. Play fake again. Green comes to his left. Drills it to his tight end, Ben Watson. Second catch for Watson in the game. A nice job by the offensive line because that's that's a slow developing play. You run the bootleg and you got to prevent any penetration. And a nice job by those guys up front for Georgia, giving David Green time to sell the fake and then come around to the backside. Tennessee hasn't given up a touchdown in the third quarter this year. Second down and three here. Outscored their opponents 48 to nothing in the third quarter. It's been their best quarter all season. In danger of yielding something here. And again, Green, Michael Johnson has been a very important part of this Georgia offense today. And again, he was one of those guys that's not lift, listed on the depth chart, but he got a lot of practice time Thursday, and he's big. You see 6'3", 215 pounds from Tulsa, Oklahoma. And he gives him a good physical receiver opposite all those other receivers. I mean, this is a team, Georgia, that is very deep at the wide receiver position. I would expect he has some speed, mm -hmm. Michael Johnson. <laughs> he better. Here's Green again. Fires it. Damian Gary is open inside the 15. And Gary, who has become really the possession receiver for this team, makes the catch. And I think we're seeing some of the fatigue now on the Tennessee defense. No pressure on David Green. David Green spreading the football around the field. And you see the strength of this Georgia team. Wide receivers spread the field, find the mismatches. Gary today. And David Green on this drive, perfect four for four. First down and 10. Lucy Smith is the motion man. Green dropped. Michael Johnson, too much speed. <laughs> Too much speed and too big a hurry to run before he caught it. And he was he had turned his eyes towards the goal line just a fraction of a second too soon. And this is where Tennessee has been really good. Even though they've given up some plays, they got a second down and 10 situation. They have been very good on defense on second down so far today. Let's see what they can do here. This season in the red zone, they've yielded touchdowns on only 43 percent of the possessions play fake green a lot of time no pressure whatsoever 
Good downfield coverage, however, and he has to scramble. That will bring up a third down and six. Well, David Green's going to kick himself in the meeting on Monday when he sees his tight end. Watch Ben Watson here run to the middle. He's open right now. If, if Green can see him right out of the fake and boom, throw the ball, he's got a touchdown. But he didn't see him, and when he did finally get his eyes downfield, he had nowhere to go with the football. Third and six. Eight-nothing game. Three men down for the Volunteers. And the audible now from David Green. And play clock to five seconds. He cannot afford a delay here. Gets the snap. Goes in the corner. Reggie Brown was open. Got a touchdown. David Green. I I'm telling you, this guy has got some poise. He misses a touchdown on second down. The play clock's down to one. He calmly steps up, takes the snap, and throws the touchdown to Reggie Brown. Billy Bennett's extra point up and good. It was set up, the drive that is, by Shedrick Wynn's 15 yard sack of banks for Tennessee on fourth and one. Brown, 11 yards from Green for the touchdown. To the classic city in this beautiful spot. And 15 to nothing. 73 years ago today, the Bulldogs of Georgia beat the Bulldogs of Yale 15 to nothing. And that scoring drive, 55 yards and eight plays, took one minute and 39 seconds. Kerouac will kick it. Corey Larkins. Waits for it at the goal line. And Larkins gathers it in at the two. Comes to his left. Good. Downfield coverage. He is denied the 20-yard line. Let's go back and take a look at the touchdown. Well, here's what Georgia did on the touchdown. They're going to use Fred Gibson. We'll check that after we get the infraction that's just been called. And I think there's just some extra... Pushing and shoving after the play, I think is going to go against Tennessee. Good coverage this time by Georgia. And Larkin after the play up with a little push. And bad field position for Tennessee. First foul on the receiving team. Half the distance to the goal. First foul. So after the penalty. Tennessee finds themselves 90 yards away and trailing by 15. And I still think for Tennessee, they've got to get it to some of their playmakers. Jason Witten, no catches. Kelly Washington, negative yardage catching the football. There's the toss to the left side. And he's in bounds now. Let's go back and take a look at that Reggie Brown catch. Okay, Fred Gibson was the decoy. He's right here, and he's going to fake the screen, and that's what the defense is going to see. Meanwhile, Reggie Brown is going to go to the corner, and he's going to get lost behind the Tennessee defense. They bite on the screen. Reggie Brown slips out behind him, and David Green finds him for the touchdown. You saw that note. Reggie Brown, 9 for 110 for the year, that the last time... Tennessee was shut out was at home to Florida the last time they were shut out on the road goes all the way back to 1981 and it was here 44 nothing to the Georgia Bulldogs Troy Fleming getting an assist it looks like cramps for him too they were pulling his toes back and that's always a, a sign of cramps Fleming is one of those leader type guys that, that Phil Fulmer really counting on in a situation like this. So now the red shirt freshman William Revel in at fullback. There's the handoff. This is Jabari Davis with a lot of room. And Kentrell Curry finally catches up with him. That's good for a fourth uh, first down, a gain of 24. And yeah, nice blocking on the back side again. This this play was designed to hit strong side to the tight end side, but you give the running back the ability wherever he sees daylight. And Jabari Davis saw daylight on the back side and is able to bust it out for a good game. 
Michael Munoz and Jason Resper blocking on the back side of that play and staying with the play. 61 yards, 11 carries. Now Kildrick Williams has come in. They have a bevy of running backs. Cedric Houston out with an injury. Might be back for the Tennessee game. Probably will be. He's got a thumb injury. Here's a fumble. And a recovery by Georgia. I think Georgia got it. James Banks tried to reach down and pick the ball up instead of falling on it. And Kendrick Golston is the guy who ended up with the football. We saw the center quarterback exchange be a problem in the rain in Knoxville against Florida. This time, beautiful weather, but a bad exchange between Scott Wells and James Banks. It looks like he pulled out too soon, and then instead of falling down on the football, he tried to reach down and pick it up, and Georgia gets the football back again. Fumble recovery, Bulldogs. Mike Berry, one of the offensive line coaches, along with Randy Sanders, trying to inspire this offensive line of Tennessee. And this is a place where the Tennessee defense better be ready because this is a perfect setup for Georgia to go for the throat right here with some kind of a trick play. Mark Rick spent all those years with Bobby Bowden. Perfect spot for it. Here's the toss and the fake reverse inside to Musa Smith. Nice diagnosis, Mr. Buckley. And let's check in once again with Jill Arrington down on the sidelines. Well, up to now, it's been just a little bit quiet down here in this stadium, but let me tell you, that fumble recovery sure did help. This week, David Pollock, he issued a challenge to Bulldog fans to become the 12th man in this game. He says he remembers last year in Knoxville after Tennessee big plays and how loud it got. Well, he wants to bring back the mystique of coming to play here between the hedges. We'll just have to see if these Bulldog fans respond to that challenge to give them an edge in this half. All right, Jill, we have not mentioned David Pollock's name much today, but he's had a terrific season. Here is the handoff to Musa Smith to the 29-yard line. It'll be third down and three. And we've got a moment to go back and spend in New York with Tim Brando. All right, Vern, let's take a look at our Kinko's top performance of the day, showing no ill effects from the six-overtime game against Tennessee last week. Fred Talley, 21 carries on the day, 241 yards. This an 80-yard jaunt as Auburn is spanked at home. They gave up 414 yards rushing at Jordan here today. That's our Kinko's top performance of the day. 414 rushing. My goodness. <laughs> Hats off to Houston Nutt, though, getting his team ready to play again after that heartbreaker in Knoxville. Third down and three from the 29. Play fake. Green comes to the left. Tipped incomplete. Willie Miles, no flag. It'll be fourth down. Nice play by Willie Miles. They've been picking on him a little bit. They've been going after him. A little bit late on the throw by David Green and Willie Miles able to make the play. On Gibson. And Willie Miles got a hand on the football. That brings on Billy Bennett, who is two for two today. 47 yards. This would equal his season long if successful. He's missed only once this year. Bennett from Kilgore's hole. Man, how good is this guy? He's done it again. And he struggled to retain his starting position in fall drill for two of days. And then all of a sudden, week before the Clemson game, they stuck with Billy Bennett. And the junior from Athens, now a perfect three of three for the afternoon. Billy Bennett, three of three for the day. Two game winners this season. Might not need one of those if his current trend continues for the Georgia Bulldogs. The SEC Special Teams Player of the Week last week and uh, has picked up right where he left off. I mean, true. Not even a question on those field goals. Corey Larkin's back for Tennessee, and before the game is over, we'll be selecting our Army Player of the Game. Here's Brett Kerouac to kick off. at the seven. Larkins for the 23. Now on the ground, Tennessee, how they done? Fumble, downs, downs, block field goal. Yeah, even when they do get it going a little bit, and they, something sets them back. And the biggest problem is they just have not gotten anything throwing the football. I mean, they have not gained 
anything in their passing game. And so what happens is if you can only run it sooner or later you run out of bullets you know and the, and the defense just keeps making you execute the running game and as soon as they get a negative yardage play on you you have no chance. New quarterback C.J. Luke has returned as the signal caller. He played the first two series. Here's the pass and it's complete out of the backfield to the 33 yard line Jabari Davis. The reason this switch CJ Leak much more like Casey Clawson in the sense that he's a pocket passer. I mean, he's got some athleticism as well but James Banks was going to beat you by running around scrambling. Well they figured that that wasn't going to get it now being down by 18. We've got to throw the football and the guy that gives us the best chance to throw the football is CJ Leak. Second down and one. And Derek Tinsley is in with William Rebel. Rebel the fullback. And the audible from CJ Leak. Tinsley, left side. First down. Out near the 37. Might have gotten the 38 yard line. Well, Casey Clawson, bruised shoulder, could not go. Did not practice all week long. And in this game, James Banks, three of six. C.J. Leak, one of one. Passing yards now 22 for the game. And you just know how frustrated yeah, he is. Very frustrated, and uh, and he knows that Jason Witten has not been a factor in this game, and that that is bad news for Tennessee. Here's Leak, looks deep, drills it, a little off uh, target, and incomplete at the 45-yard line. Kelly Washington speaking of people who have not been factors yeah. in this game and you can see it in his body language he doesn't have any bounce to him right now he knows he's not been into this game he's not been the kind of factor that he's accustomed to being he had three games in a row of over 100 yards receiving before today and then look two for minus 13 and you can just see that he has not gotten into any kind of a rhythm in this football game Jonathan Wade comes on to the wide receiver wearing number four true freshman he wide right on second down and ten they fake the draw play here's leak caught and dropped our guy David Pollock you said you hadn't called his name for a while he must have heard your Jill must have told him one or the other he made one of the great plays of this season an interception against South Carolina here he is right here defensive end he has a great nose for the football he comes on an inside move and then his quick reaction allows him to chase down C.J. Leak now he would not have chased down James Banks but C.J. Leak in the game not quite as swift as James Banks and Pollock makes the play that's the sixth sack of the year for David Pollock his first this afternoon it's third and 14 Jabari Davis back in the backfield Boy, Tennessee is just so limited on offense right now. They, they, this is just not what they've been accustomed to doing. Time called. Up by a 2 0 score. Billy Bennett with the first of three field goals. That followed a blocked field goal attempt. Bennett gave Georgia an 8 0 halftime lead. And then David Green found Reggie Brown. For the touchdown from 11 yards out, Billy Bennett with his third consecutive field goal of the game, and we stand at 18 to nothing as Georgia will give it up on fourth down now. Jonathan Kilgo, his fifth punt of the game. And Rashad Baker is back this time to return the punt for the first time in the ball game. He is normally the punt returner, but Larkins has filled in there today. Nice and high by Kilgo. Out of bounds. We'll see where it's spotted. And that'll be ruled out at the 13 yard line. Well, today's Home Depot Scholar Athlete is John Stincomb of Georgia. John with a 3.7 point grade point average in microbiology. Home Depot's commitment to the investment of our future is shown today by donating $1,000 to the University of Georgia's scholarship fund. And there are his, uh, that's his father and his stepfather to the left. His mom and dad, Gary and Karen divorced when he was five. They promised they would always stay together as parents for the two boys, Matt and his brother John. And despite remarriages, uh, John and Matt refer to them as their four parents. Here's James Banks back in the quarterback. Lobs it out left side. And here's 
Mahomes banks. Uh, John Stinko Stinchcomb, what a marvelous fella he is. That's uh, Gary in the black shirt. J.R. Johnson to the left. Estelle Stinchcomb is to the far right. And Karen uh, Johnson is in there somewhere. John was talking about his brother Matt's wedding when he served his best man. And he walked both of his moms down the aisle. A very unique situation, but you can tell a very tight family. Matt's his best friend. They talk a couple times a week. Not a bad guy to get advice from, a starting tackle in the National Football League. There's Banks. Gerald Briggs, pressure from the backside, and the pass is incomplete at the 35-yard line. Well, of great concern to my partner, Todd Blackledge, Penn State. Tim, what do you got? All right, Vern, I've got some good news and bad news. Here's the good news. Casey Williams, number 93, on the nine-yard reception from Zach Mills to make it 13-7. Here's the bad news. They missed the extra point at the big house. Time winding down in the third, Vern. Special teams, special teams all over the country this year. I mean, so many plays and so many games and outcomes of games affected by plays on the special teams, including ours today. Second down and 10. 18 nothing with 129 to go. And here's Banks. Goes deep, man coverage, up for grabs, tipped away and complete at the 25-yard line. We also, on that play, saw a little bit of the arm strength of James Banks. I mean, he, he sent that thing out there pretty good. Look at that. Jason Witten, no catches. Kelly Washington, two for negative yardage. And a dejected Kelly Washington heads to the sideline. Kelly Washington, who had caught in excess of 100 yards in passes each of the previous three games. Here's Banks. Again, getting pressure. Caught, dropped at the 20-yard line. What a play by David Pollock. I mean, Jason Witten was blocking David Pollock. And Jason Witten is a pretty good football player. It's 6'5", 265 pounds. But watch David Pollock just fight him off and go get the quarterback. Here's Pollock tied up with Witten. And he just keeps stringing him out, stringing him out, and at the right moment, lets him go and goes and gets the quarterback. This Georgia defense feeds off of his energy. I mean, he has got a high motor guy who never slows down. On fourth down, Colquitt back to punt. Damian Gary awaits this nice high punt. Fair catch signal takes it out of bounds. And Georgia gets it back at the 43. Lucia Smith could be the final play of the third quarter. Time runs out through three. That's the end of the third quarter with the score. Georgia 18, Tennessee zip. We'll return to Stanford Stadium right after this message and a word from your local station. Todd Blackledge, Jill Arrington, Vern Lundquist, and Georgia shutting out Second a Tennessee eight, team eight, that has been without its starting quarterback today, but this Georgia defense has played very well as well. Now David Green, and Georgia still not uh, very good in the time of possession category, but it hasn't mattered in posting a 5-0 record. Here is Musa Smith, and he gets across midfield and takes it uh, down to the 48-yard line of the Tennessee Volunteers. Well, we've talked a lot about Casey Clawson and the fact Tennessee did not have him available today, but Georgia has been most impressive defensively. Yeah, they really have. I think for the second week in a row, they have answered the question about how physical of a football team they are. The only chance Tennessee had in this game today was to make it a slugfest without Casey Clawson. That's the kind of game it was for the whole first half, but Georgia hung in there. They haven't run the ball real well, but they protected David Green, and then defensively, I think they played outstanding. Third down and two for the Bulldogs. Gibson starts in motion, and the draw play to Musa Smith did not get it. He's going to be down at the 49-yard line. All right, Tim. Well, Georgia's trying to go 6-0 for the first time since 82. They won the national championship, of course, in 1980 with a guy named Herschel Walker. They won their last SEC championship in 1982. It has been a 20-year drought. But visions of a game in Atlanta beginning to dance through their collective consciousness. Now here's uh, Kilgo back to punt. And Larkins waits for it at the 10. Boomer. 
too good. Yep. Touchback. And that one's going to uh, come out to the 20-yard line. Volunteers get it back, but they are down 18-0. James Banks back at quarterback for the Volunteers. And we'll look from the end zone. Derek Tinsley is the deep back in the eye on first down. Banks play fake. Chased by David Pollock. Pulls up and lets it go deep. He's got a man open at the 40. And down inside the 35-yard line, it's Tony Brown, number 81. A 48-yard game. Georgia is thinking run here all the way because they brought their safety, Sean Jones, up into the situation, and that left man-to-man -man coverage. And Tony Brown just ran three down the middle of the field. And Banks able to find him. Georgia thinking run all the way, had a safety up against the run, and not enough defenders down the field. Longest gain of the year for Tony Brown. Longest gain in his career. The 6'2 sophomore from Lauderdale Lakes, Florida. First down at the 32. Only once has Tennessee been inside the 30. That was when they had a field goal block. Here's Banks in trouble. Three lances. Flag. This is going to come back. Banks is down at the 25-yard line. Two flags back near the 38-yard line. They tried to run the same play. That was the exact same play. Same combination pattern between Washington and Tony Brown. And this time, Banks tried to run with it. Better coverage by the Georgia Bulldogs. Here's what George is going to try to do. They're going to bring an extra safety up here and just play man-to-man -man with these two guys. And this time, Georgia did a better job at defending it. They keep all those guys in there to defend the run and then squeeze the pass route. That time, very well defended by Georgia, and Banks had to run the football. Again, a very limited game plan for Tennessee in terms of what they were going to try to ask James Banks to do in this football game. Well, at the ninth penalty against Tennessee, Jomo Fagan comes on as a wide receiver. Philip Fulmer was going after his 100th victory today, 99 and 21 for his career. It appears uh, that quest will have to wait for another day. 18 to zip here. Here's Banks, right side. Caught. Leonard Scott. Well, had uh, or if. Philip Fulmer wins today. He would tie legendary Notre Dame coach Frank Leahy for the uh, quickest run to uh, 100 wins. It would come in his 121st game. And of course, Robert Neal in the Tennessee took him 120 games. Gil Doby, who spent much of a varied career at Cornell, was the quickest to 100. Philip Fulmer, we've seen the gamut of emotions yeah. from him today, haven't we? Uh, this is a hard game for him. I mean, he knew that. It had to go a certain way for his team to have a chance. And Tennessee's not used to being an underdog in a football game. And they certainly came in here as one today. Banks, screen pass. That one looked like it was in jeopardy. But they complete it. And here goes Tennessee. Touchdown, Derek Tinsley. It did look like it was in jeopardy. I mean, it's just a matter of inches sometimes on a screen play. Here's Tinsley, and they're going to execute the screen. Let it set up. James Banks shows nice patience there and then gets the ball to Tinsley. Now, Jonathan Wade, number four, gets a decent block out there just in the way, but that's all Tinsley. I mean, he saw the goal line, and he got to it. Derek Tinsley, the sophomore, a 33-yard touchdown reception. Works in a variety of roles for this Tennessee team. They will go for two. Play fake. They weren't set. Man. Flag down. Banks denied. Now, I, I don't know if you got to be set for a full second before you snap the ball. And I don't know if they got the receiver set or if they had enough guys on the line of scrimmage. 
usually you're pretty sure of what you want to do on a two-point play. It's something you practice the same play most of the week. There was no flag, no illegal formation. The point is no good. Tennessee not able to do much offensively, but a couple big pass plays by James Banks and the Volunteers on the board, 18 to 6. Uh, you saw a unique military weapon in the background, the Athens double-barrel cannon. It's the only one of its kind, but it lacked a workable firing device and was never used in battle. 18 to 6 here as Tennessee has scored on the uh, screen pass. Now Philip Newman getting ready to kick off. The Bulldogs leading Tennessee 18 to 6. These are not the only Bulldogs in action today, by the way. The Texas Lutheran University mm. Bulldogs. Huh? Homecoming. They're hosting the Austin College Kangaroos today. We'll get Tim Brando to get us an update as soon as we can. Yeah. Fred Gibson. Safety. Texas Lutheran, of course, fresh from that convincing 21-20 win last week over McMurray. Sweet. <laughs> when you're hapless, you reach a certain state. Yeah. It's not enviable. And that was the team everybody thought was the best in football starting this season. James Banks has showed something here in this football game. He's made some plays. We saw him run it in the first half in that last series, a couple nice throws to get his team on the scoreboard. First and ten. Here's Green. Nice play fake. Fires it out to his tight end, Ben Watson. Fourth catch for the tight end. You know what I like about that? I, I think the strategy has changed a little bit for Georgia. If they are still winning 18 to nothing, then they can say, hey, let's run Musa, let's work the clock, our defense is stuffing them, let's keep punting the football. But now that they've scored, they're still two scores behind, but Georgia has to, has to be aggressive on offense. They can't just try to melt this thing down now and get out of here with a win. So I like that first down call by Mark Rick. Second and one, a gain of nine. Ah, oh, Musa Smith stuffed. It'll be third and five. Now, unexpected departure from one of the members of the coaching staff at Georgia this week, Tony Pierce, the running backs coach, running backs coach, resigned uh, in the middle of the season for personal reasons, undisclosed, and uh, they they will miss him in a variety of ways, will they not? Yeah, he was a very enthusiastic guy, and uh, you know the team really liked that about him. But it also, you know, at this point in the season, forces you to kind of. Reshuffle your staff and the assignment of your staffs. Mike Bobo, who was helping Mark Rick with the quarterbacks, has moved over to be the running back coach, but still on the headsets as usual with Mark Rick on the sideline. Third and five. Here's Green. Has some time. Puts it out on a rope, and it's caught by Terrence Edwards. That's a season high of seven catches for Edwards. 22 yard gain. Well, that was a huge play for the Tennessee defense, and as has been the case most of the day, not able to get enough pressure on David Green, and that enables Terrence Edwards to lose his man and Green to find him. Jabari Greer, who was the starter, who was put on the bench today in favor of Julian Battle, but now back in the game because of the injury to Willie Miles, was victimized on that play. And Terrence Edwards gets another notch in the record book for Georgia. That is his eighth career 100 yard game and gives him sole possession of the leadership in that category. Had shared it with Bryce Hunter and Fred Gibson. On first down, toss, Musa Smith. Wall with the attempted block. And Smith to the 48 yard line. When you talk about the weapons on this Georgia team, you think, boy, we. You're going to go play Tennessee and Musa Smith. He's not going to run very well. And Fred Gibson, your best receiver or most explosive guy, is not going to catch anything. I don't think he has a catch yet. And instead, uh, Terrence Edwards steps up. I mean, here's Musa, 29 yards today after that great performance last week. But David Green able to spread the football around and find other people. And today, Terrence Edwards has been the go to guy. Here's the handoff to the fullback. J.T. Wall rumbles to the 40-yard line for first down. Well, Georgia has won five in a row. Let's take you back to 1983 in the Sugar Bowl. Some folks have more vivid memories of this than others. <laughs> that number 14 is a guy I sit next to every week. 
Todd Blackledge finds Greg Garrity, and Penn State puts an end to an undefeated season for the Bulldogs. They uh, they have uh, admired you ever since. Yeah. It was funny. I was out in the hallway before the game, and I ran into John Lastinger, who's a quarterback on that Georgia team, and I also ran into Kevin Jackson, who was the nose guard on that team, and Lastinger came up and said, that's the closest you've been to him in 20 years. <laughs> I think they're still a little sore about it, but that was a great team, and uh, we had an awfully fine football team as well. Oh, boy. This, this, this dog gets more pub than, than anything. He's unbelievable. <laughs> There's an ug of you. <laughs> That's the ug of you. Sure, you think it's easy being a mascot. Where's my ice bags? And the folks who were producing the documentary <laughs> from... There they are. The ice bags are back in the back. <laughs> I got to bring them out for Ugga. You know, he made a visit to the White House last night. There's Tony Milton, number nine. And Jabril Wilson makes the tackle. Number eight. Really, considering the circumstances and the lack of Casey Clawson, I mean, that, that was the one injury that they just haven't been able to overcome. They've been able to overcome a lot of injuries on Tennessee this year, but, boy, losing their quarterback too tough. And... Uh, but a pretty valiant effort. Their defense has played pretty well today. I mean, again, this is a Georgia offense with lots of weapons and only 18 points with seven minutes and 15 seconds left in the ball game. Third and seven, backs in the eye. Milton is the deep back in the eye. And here's Green going in the corner. Gibson, well, he made that catch last yes, week for did. a 42-yard touchdown. Uh, he caught that one last week down around his ankle, and this was the same kind of throw, a little bit underthrown. And Fred Gibson, he does have one catch today, but only for two yards, and he's been a non-factor in the football game. And I don't know if David's mad at Fred for not making a better effort or himself for not putting enough on the football. And Kilgo is on to punt on fourth down. Well, he nailed this. That may go into the stands. No, not, not quite. How about that? <laughs> your team's undefeated. You're winning 18 to 6, and you get booed by your home crowd as a punter. That's weak. I'm sorry. Um, Investment CBS Sports Desk. 21. 6.56 to go in this one. Georgia 18 to 6, trying to win over Tennessee for the third time in as many years. Trying to win at home against an SEC top 10 team for the first time since 1976. Here's the reverse. And this is Jonathan Wade, the wide receiver, who carries it out across the 35 and out of bounds, a gain of 16 at the 35 yard line, 36. Have to go all the way back to 1976 when they defeated 10th ranked Alabama 21 0 for a home game victory against a top 10 SEC opponent. They've not played all that well in Sanford Stadium against ranked opponents. No, they haven't. They've lost 13 of their last 14 in top 25 matchups, so they got a chance to erase some bad streaks with a win today. Thanks to the 45 yard line. Catch is made by Tony Brown, number 81. Now Mark Rich, second year. Ray Goff went 0 and 5 against Tennessee. Jim Donnan, four straight years, three straight years. They came in. Georgia undefeated 4 and 0 to face Tennessee and lost all three years in a row. And Mark Rick trying to get his second victory. Donnan was a coach, of course, in the 2000 win. Here's Banks shakes the tackle. And another, and he uh, gets a first down for Tennessee at the 43-yard line. I think James Banks has really gotten better as this game has gone. You know, the Randy Sanders told us he's a better, you know, when you put him in game-type situations, he seems to be better than just in normal practice situations. And you take a look at what he's done today. As a true freshman with a limited playbook against a highly ranked team in their stadium, pretty good effort by James Banks. First down and 10, volunteers. 
Banks chased, got him. Sheldrick win, second sack today, and each has been very significant. And a very brilliant move by Brian Van Gorder because he brought all new defensive linemen in on this play. And Shedrick Wynn is right here, and he's got fresh legs coming into the game. Now, I don't know why he wasn't blocked. That was a mistake by Tennessee. But a good decision by Brian Van Gorder to rotate his defensive linemen because the Georgia defense seemed to be losing a little bit of its edge. Second sack for Wynn, sixth of the afternoon. Here's the screen pass to Derek Tinsley. Tries to spin and taken down. Tony Gilbert made a nice play. He didn't get the tackle, but he slowed Tinsley up enough for his friends to get here. How has the Georgia defense played? Pretty good. They've harassed the quarterbacks. They've done a pretty good job stopping the run and getting after James Banks or C.J. Leak, whoever's been in. The clock is stopped with six minutes and 35 seconds remaining in this one. It's 18-6. Bible three to go in this one. Casey Clawson can do not but cheer from the sidelines. Bruised shoulder. It's his non-throwing shoulder, but uh, painful nonetheless. Came out, gave it a bit of a go before they put the pads on an hour and a half before the game. And Philip Fulmer says, not today. So James Banks, the redshirt freshman, the second of two quarterbacks. And he has seen most of the play today. On third down. Goes deep. Has a man open. It's Washington. And he slips a tackle and heads toward the end zone. Out of bounds inside the 10. 44-yard game. Boy, did he go up in the air for this football, too. I thought when it left James Banks' hands, I knew he was going to Washington. I thought it was way over his head. Watch him find the ball, stop, and go straight up for it. Outstanding effort by Kelly Washington. On what has been a relatively quiet day for him, he makes a huge catch on third and 20. Kelly Washington, who missed the first two games of this season because of the sprained knee. Three games in succession, over 100 yards. And uh, down on the sidelines. There's also a player for Georgia back at the 25. And Washington's down, and Demario Minter, a backup cornerback for Georgia, is down. Team now in the game for 168 yards. And Tennessee in scoring territory again. From the eye, Davis. Boy, he was knocked backward as he got to the five yard line. Mark Rick casts a look at the uh, clock that's now under four minutes. Georgia has been very solid against the run. They haven't given up any big runs. And last week, Jabari Davis had a 58-yard run that really kind of put Tennessee in control of the game. And right now, I mean, James Banks is losing too much time off the clock. He's probably going to have to waste a time out here. They don't have enough people on the field. But this clock is running, and they're two scores behind. Once again, it's a freshman quarterback. Play clock under five. Here's the toss. Derek Tinsley he wants to throw it, drills it into the end zone. Caught. Touchdown. Jason Witten. That is his first catch today. And the only way they got him the football was from a running back. The quarterback couldn't get it to him. So they gave it to Tinsley and said, hey, throw it to number one. Here he is right here. It shows run. George is thinking run, and Witten fakes block and then goes to the back of the end zone. And Sean Jones, number six, the safety, lost track of him. And Derek Tinsley put it in a good spot. Now the extra point attempt will come from Philip Newman. This would make it a five-point game with 3.21 to go. Oh, boink. He got it. Well, it, it didn't matter really either because they're still five points down now. They don't need an extra point, just a touchdown. But six points, they still could have won with a touchdown. Kinsley to Witten. Who to thunk it? James Banks, the freshman quarterback. 18-13, Tennessee. They get a huge throw from that man, Banks, to Kelly Washington on a third and 20. That sets up the touchdown. It came on third and five. An 80-yard drive in nine plays. It took 335. Now Tennessee with one timeout left. Georgia, all three. 
Boy, how about the no quit in this Tennessee football team? They hung in it and won a six overtime game last week. And now they're right back in this one with 320 left. Now Georgia, they're expecting onside kick. I don't know if, if I'm Tennessee, uh, they're lined up to onside kick one, but your defense has played pretty well. Georgia not doing anything here in this fourth quarter. Philip Newman will kick it off. They might even try to bounce it right beyond that back line of the Georgia defense. Remember last year when they tried a squib kick mm -hmm. after they scored a go-ahead touchdown? This one is taken. I, I don't understand why you onside kick there. I mean, there's three minutes and 15 seconds left. You got one timeout, and Georgia hasn't done squat here in the fourth quarter. Only 49 yards in the fourth quarter. Tennessee hopes to get the big bounce, but it just goes right up into the hands of Burt Jones, a senior strong safety who does the right thing. He goes and finds the football and then goes straight down with both arms on it. But, Vern, I just don't understand why you don't let your defense try to stop him and kick the ball deep there. Tony Milton is in, JT Wall as well. Hand off to Milton to the 40-yard line. And now it's time for our five-star play of the game presented by Wrangler. Third and five. Goal. Toss sweep. Derek Tinsley looking to throw the ball. Fires into the end zone. The pass is going to be touchdown, Tennessee. Jason Witten. You know, the problem here is even if you do stop him now on third and fourth down or force him to punt, you're going to have bad field position. You're going to have a long field to work with. If you kick it, kick it deep and get a three and out, maybe you get good field position. That was Bob Kessling, the radio announcer of Tennessee, with a call on the touchdown pass. Left side, Georgia. Michael Johnson. Nice job by David Green finding the outlet receiver. They were looking down the field, and Michael Johnson was the he was the outlet guy. And David Green made a nice decision of not only throwing him the football, but throwing it to where he could stay in bounds and keep the clock running. Third and two. 209 to go. The ball at the 35. David Pollock in right now as a fullback. Remember, he was recruited to Georgia as a fullback, so he's an extra blocking back in on this play. Here he is right here, number 47. And JT Wall, the handoff, Milton. Struggles and doesn't get it. It will be fourth down. And Tennessee calls timeout. Their last timeout, and they'll stop it right before this fourth down. Mac Brown was asked earlier this week if this was a defining game for him and for Chris Sims, and he said no. I wonder. I think that was a... I'm not sure what kind of statement that was, aside from being false, because I think it was a defining game for both of them. Such a huge rivalry. Fourth and two. Well, this is a big decision for Mark Rick. Last time, his punter tried to... Knock one down, and uh, he kicked it through the goalpost and got booed. So right now, Mark Rick appears to be looking like he wants to go for it, or maybe he just wants to try to draw him off sides with the snap count. Well, Mark Rick sharing a moment with David Green. Fourth and two officially. I mean, sure, it'd be great to get a first down, but best case scenario, you want to pin Tennessee back as far as you can. Here's the toss. Coming right, lots of room. Tony Milton scrolling. What a great call. What a great call by Mark Rick. Fourth and two. Everybody thinking an inside play, and they go toss sweep with Milton, who's got more breakaway speed than Musa Smith. Watch the defense just commit to the inside. And Milton, with the speed and the fresh leg, takes it to the corner you run Musa the whole game and then you bring Milton in for a critical fourth and two play and get the first down Tony Milton a 26 year old redshirt freshman 
John Chavis, the defensive coordinator, Philip Fulmer. A moment gone by. Milton out of football for four years. Got a chance to come back here. There's the knee taken by David Green. And again, if you don't onside kick, there's no way Mark Rick goes for it on fourth and two. He punts the football back to your offense. But with that field position, he can go for it on fourth and two and take the chance. Tom, now for our CBS Sportsline stat of the game, Georgia passing yards in the first quarter. Tennessee, nothing in the first quarter and 183 cents. Get complete game stats at cbssportsline.com or on America Online at our keyword, CBS Sportsline. Georgia had to really kind of hang on here in the fourth quarter, but they did it. And they'll move to 6 and 0. Oh. And they remain one of the only undefeated teams left in college football and 3 and 0 oh in the SEC. And three in a row against Tennessee. They haven't beaten ranked opponents in back-to-back -back weeks since 1991. And they get that done again today as well. And a happy Georgia coaches box right next to us. Hugs and high fives all the way around. Here's a chant you haven't heard in a couple of years around here. How about them dogs? How about them dogs? Bulldogs prevail against a valiant volunteer team. 18-13 the final. Philip Fulmer said last year he had second thoughts about the squib kick after they lost at home 26-24. I wonder if he might have second thoughts about the decision to onside kick after they got within five. Our U.S. Army player of the game, Terrence Edwards, the wide receiver. A season high of seven catches for 112 yards. He becomes the eighth, it's his eighth career 100-yard reception game and puts him alone in that spot in the history of Georgia football. Let's go down to Jill Arrington. Well, Coach Rick, you're 6-0. Huge back-to-back -back wins for you. What does this Tennessee victory do for this football team? Well, I'm, all I can say is it's great to be 6-0. It's great to uh, reward these fans for all the years that they've been coming up short. And I can't say how proud I am of the kicking teams and the defense and then the offense finished it off at the end. I'm just proud of these guys. Terrence Edwards, the player of the game. Why so much success? You're all over the field today. Um, it just that I had to come out here and make plays for this team. Uh, we had a great week of practice. Coach Rick said the wide receivers got to make plays. And he put it in our hands, and we came up with a victory. All right. Well, congratulations. Great win, Vern. Thank you, Jill. Bulldogs, 6-0. They win it over the Tennessee Volunteers by a count of 18 to 13. Has a nice ring for the Georgia fans, the undefeated Georgia Bulldogs. For Jill Arrington and Todd Blackledge, Ivor Lundquist saying goodbye from Sanford Stadium in Athens.